thought I was going to be drawing houses, but oh, look at those droopy, droopy sunflowers. They're like 8, 10 feet high. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't oh believe my it. Gosh. And then, of course, getting them out with the roots, it's all fun and games, so you've got to <laughs> dig that root out. If you were teaching an art class and I was your student, what is the one thing you would suggest I do in order to improve this painting? Time to employ the little pro again and see if I can come up with some compelling content. <laughs> ah, I've been working. Actually, the most intriguing, intriguing, like the most absurd thing happened the other day. We were walking, my husband and I, in the park near our house. We are getting over our COVID, our first COVID that we've ever had, and we're a little bit tired, but not, you know, stuff isn't coming out so much anymore, but we're tired. Anyway, we're walking in the park, you know, slowly, <laughs> very slowly, and a lady and her husband were coming up to us and I was admiring her flannel shirt thinking oh I should get a flannel shirt for the winter that looks like that it was like blue and green beautiful anyway she looks at me she points right at me and says you you teach art classes on zoom and I was like what I mean no I don't do it on zoom I do it on YouTube but what <laughs> what I have a teeny tiny little channel and you know anyway it was my first time to get picked out in public and my husband was uh, very supportive of this thing of my teeny tiny little moment of fame so thank you thank you to the lady in the flannel shirt for um, making my day <laughs> <laughs> and I loved coming home to tell my teenagers that that happened because, you know, they enjoyed that too. So, <clears throat> what's going on today? Today is the first day in two weeks that everyone has gone to school and to work. So, I have the space to myself and what am I doing? There is a pile of things to clean up around here after having people home and sick for two weeks. I mean, all taking turns. Not everybody was home the whole two weeks, but they were taking turns. And so why bother picking up when, you know, the next person is going to be sleeping on the couch? But now I can do that. But of course, I should do some art. I picked up them. And well, I picked up, I went to, I went to, I didn't even physically go. I logged in to one of my Patreon sessions with Emma Carlisle and started making these birds from her backyard, from her backyard feeder, which she's actually filming with a GoPro, which is like what you're seeing me on right now. And I mean, I'm loving the direction going on here. At first I didn't, but now I'm really loving it. And so I'm thinking like, wow, that looks like a, almost, almost looks like a greeting card. And by the way, these are my new little sketchbooks. I've made a whole bunch of them from a board book that I found at a little lending library in the neighborhood. Anyway, super sweet. So I'm thinking, what do I do to get warmed up today and do some art before I start picking up all the stuff around the house? Maybe I should continue with that Emma Carlisle Patreon and put you overhead so you can watch me do that very, very fast. I mean, I won't be going fast, but you'll be seeing it fast. And um, yeah. Maybe doing that. You know something that scares me that I think I probably should do, but I probably shouldn't even tell you because it scares me. I think at some point in my life, I really need to pack up my things when I'm by myself, like without my family around, just walk down the block and sketch a street scene from our neighborhood. 
If you've watched me for a while, you've seen some of my videos of these adorable houses in our neighborhood. And I've sketched them all from photographs that I've taken um, while I'm sitting here in the comfort and safety of my studio. But I really should go out and do it on, on location and bring you along. I think it would be compelling. I think it would be interesting and for sure it would be scary. So if I get up the nerve to do that today, I'll bring you along. I was thinking I need to go over to New Seasons and pick up some meat to make some chili. So what if I work in a little sketching time on the way over? We'll see, I don't know. I'm probably gonna chicken out on that one and just to work on some Emma Carlisle birds. All right, well, whatever it is, I'll bring you along. All right.
these moments where my mind runs From the emptiness of open roads And oh, oh, oh I'm tired of sleeping on my own oh, 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 I've such a long way to go And you remind me of somebody I know Can I stay with you a while? Come tomorrow, I'll be gone again So don't ask me for much I'm no good at keeping promises I promise this is enough And oh Such a goddamn lonely road And I'm sleeping alone But you remind me of somebody I know Can I stay with you a Cause you remind me of some place I call go out. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go out, but I thought, because I always get asked a lot of questions about what did you use on something. This is a like a preliminary sketch. I think that the definition of their faces could be a little more pronounced now that the watercolor is dry. Um, and so I could go back in and kind of give it a little more a little more definition, a little more darker, some of the darker colors. Um, this gouache is now dry, fully dry, so I can go in and do that. But all of you a lot of times ask what I used. I started with this 9B, Lyra 9B, just to make things loose. And the lovely thing of what happens with that is um, when you take any other kind of wet media, when you go over the top. So I used this gouache. This is an acrylic gouache, so it uh, doesn't reactivate once I put it down. It's um, not water-based, it's a polymer. So I just took this ivory white and I smudged it over and it and it brings some of this, some of this gray into, into the paint, which I find quite lovely. So it's not that pure um, ivory white. It's a little bit smudged out. Um, what else did I use? My watercolor palette. This is just a ceramic dish that I found at the Goodwill. And the colors I most often use are quinacridone. Is it quinacridone? No, no. Quinacridone gold, cerulean blue, and Payne's gray. And then over here, I think I have like opera rose and a um, Oh, I don't remember what this red is. And there's a black here. And that's it. Very, very limited palette going on with the watercolors. Um, and then the other things are luminance pencils. I quite enjoy the luminance. They're very expensive as far as pencils go, but um, they're lovely. They're lovely. If you're at the place where you can spend a little extra on a, they, they lay down a lot of, um, a lot of pigment. And then <clears throat> this new color too is turquoise blue. 
and I was kind of trying to do some some color blocking on the side here and these are as they are water soluble I can just dip my finger in some water and see how it smudges out it's kind of awesome that way what else did I use oh get a stick if you don't have a stick then when your watercolor is still wet you can scratch in some lines which is quite cool oh, I can even scratch some in right now you can even dip your brush into your brush your stick into into your wet palette and get some really awesome unanticipated lines that way as well and if you get some different sticks that have some different um, tips um, like bamboo stick that has more of a pointed and it's much harder than this softer wood that I found in the woods it's nice they're nice nice supplies don't cost you anything and what else oh my gosh I'm sure there's gonna be something that I left out and somebody will be asking for it in the comments which go ahead and do all right I'm going to pack up a little kit a very tiny kit this is my thing to myself is that my deal with myself is that I can pack up a teeny tiny kit so that so one little book maybe this Lyra 9b and maybe not even any water media maybe maybe I'll just maybe a couple of distress crayons these are Tim Holtz Ranger distress crayons they're kind of interesting maybe a 0.5 uni pen I want it to be really really like almost nothing coming in my bag because I think that's what's making me most nervous is the thought of digging through for colors <clears throat> so what if that is my palette and I just go and make a couple of teeny tiny sketches maybe even I'm just standing up somewhere and it'll just be like now I can say I've done it you know what I mean like I'm not just going in with all of my stuff and like setting up with a chair and all that I'm just gonna go even if I'm just standing up somewhere open up my book and just like sketch a street scene real quick and then I can say that I've done it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do today. And then I'm going to go buy some meat so I can make some chili. That's it. Okay, I think I found my first thing. They are these awesome sunflowers. I thought I was going to be drawing houses, but... Oh, look at those droopy, droopy sunflowers. All right, I'm going to stand over here next to the fence and make a little sketch. All right, there's a nice start. That's what I'm looking at. And I snuck in a couple more colors. So here I am. The colors. A couple of new colors. Let's see if I can get some of that good color in there. <laughs> I love it when the sunflowers are like hanging their heads down like oh my god they're like we're so heavy we can't even put our heads up to the sun anymore. Right, right. Right. It means it's the end of summer. End of summer and they're heavy with all their seeds and yeah. Then, like yeah. It's like the minute before when we had we just got back last night and in my yard there's like the um the the, the, the 
the squirrels have gotten the yeah. lid. They're yeah. torn it all apart. Yeah. There's pieces all throughout yeah. the yard. I love that too, when yeah. you see a little pile of that's sunflower right. seeds that's down right. on the ground. Yeah. Jill's um, sunflowers this year, oh my God, they were taller than her yeah. freaking house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I know. Sometimes they're like eight, ten feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I couldn't oh believe it. God. And then, of course, getting them out with the roots, it's all fun and games. So you got to <laughs> dig that root out. Okay. <clears throat> I'm back from my walk and sketch, and I don't know what I was so afraid of, honestly. It was great, and I talked to two different neighbors who were nice and kind, and um, I saw a guy riding his bike, and then he stopped because he found a feather on the road, and he picked it up. <laughs> and I saw a dog sleeping on a table on the porch, and then when I came back from the store, I thought I should film it for you. So then the dog had moved from the table to a chair. <laughs> and what else? Um, I found a book, How to Ruin Everything, Essays by George Watsky, which I'm very curious to read because I don't know how to ruin everything. That sounds exciting. Um, I know I have a copy of this unless I've given it away, but Eric Carl, Eric Carl, and it's a very nice clean copy of, and by clean, I mean this is a board book, so if my kids had it, they would have chewed the corners of the board book, but Eric Carl, oh, I just want to look at this stuff again and think about how I might replicate this with collage. I mean, Eric Carl. So anyway, what I did is I found a sunflower and I went to town with a sunflower and I'm so pleased. And the only thing that I wished I had done is to pack a more brilliant yellow like my quinacridone gold but I didn't and it's fine and I got out there and I'm definitely doing this every day where the weather is fine and I can sit on the ground and go somewhere and just be I'm gonna go find something to draw most likely I'm going to draw houses because that's what I think I'm really better at drawing but I love the sunflowers. I mean, maybe I'll have to go back down and visit those sunflowers again and do it again with some more brilliant colors. But in any case, if you're on the fence of going out and painting outside or just making a little sketch outside somewhere, pack something very teeny tiny, just a very, very light kit. And um, I think you'll be surprised and happy. All right. Now it's time to either spend an hour painting something or go over there and get that chili made because it's not going to cook itself. the next morning I mean for you it's one second for me it's the next morning and something occurred to me I was looking at this last night which is fine I love the line work 
the colors are all right, but there is one glaring omission or what should I say? Let's see, can you find it? Can you figure out if you were, um, if you were teaching an art class and I was your student, what is the one thing you would suggest I do in order to improve this painting? Any ideas? Well, I have an idea, <laughs> obviously. Um, it's a value issue. And so I'm gonna put you overhead and show you what was totally obvious once I figured it out, but it wasn't obvious enough for me to include it in my initial sketch. Um, I feel that learning how to make art is like learning a new language. You have to get out there and make stuff. And when you've made stuff, then you're going to see the stuff that you can do better. Same as when I was learning Japanese, I would have to speak and say things incorrectly, and then I would remember how to say them correctly the next time. Or maybe not, maybe incorrectly is too harsh of a way to say it. Maybe it's just um, say it in a way that didn't express whatever it is that I wanted to express in the best way that I could express it. And it's the same when it's the same way with all of our visual um, art, visual learning, sketching, illustration, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, let's see if you guessed right on what is the one thing that could have improved um, this painting or that could improve it because I can still do it and I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> all right, here we are. And you're in camera. There we are. Um, all right. So since I already told you that this is a value issue, what we're going to do is we are going to, oh, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the magic of editing and show you this in black and white. Now you're seeing it in black and white. And so you're seeing that the values are all far too similar to one another. So what we need to do <clears throat> is to decide in the original picture, what item was the darkest and what item is the mid-tones and which item is the lightest and here's the original picture <coughs> excuse my coughing <coughs> okay so in the original picture you can see the darkest the mid-tone and the and the lightest clearly it's very very clear when we set it into black and white and as i improve as an artist i'm sure i will start to see this better so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the heads of these flowers dark, 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 and um, and I'm going to do something to separate the darks that I created here from this line. Otherwise, the dark here will just all blend into that. And so, so I'm going to do that. And then if I can, I'll lighten up the leaves or the, what do you call them, the petals petals and so they look more luminous so they're already quite luminous over here so this one may turn out to be my most successful piece in in the sketch um, which is great because then I can go ahead and I can paint from this painting taking the lessons I've learned here into you know something that could be more finished so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start with Payne's gray now I know that the head of the sunflower is brown, but I'm just gonna start with dark, dark Payne's gray and just see, just test it out, see how it goes. See what happens. Because actually, when you're working with values, it shouldn't matter really um, if you got the color right, so long as you got the value right. darken that head. There we go. Let that dry a bit. And let's see if I can try something slightly different on this one. I'm going to use like a purple. I think purple would be awesome. 
because purple and yellow, aren't they complementary? Yes, they are across from each other on the color wheels, so they are complementary, so could be awesome. Let's see, we will find out. Okay, let's drop it in. Drop in that dark, dark. And it doesn't need to be the exact same color the whole time. That's why I have this palette. It has four different colors on it that create the most juicy purples. And I couldn't tell you offhand what they are. Sorry. I think in some of my other videos I've shared um, the colors on this palette. Oh, already looking awesome. Already. Now, not at all sure about this strategy of painting next to white petals that haven't been painted, because if I try to go in with the yellow afterwards, it may not turn out very well, but it's all an experiment. You gotta speak the language to learn it, right? Speaking the language right now. Speaking the language. Oh my gosh, but I do love it. I do love this already. This purple and yellow situation. You may have to do a whole thing of sunflowers with that. Hello. Oh my goodness. So pretty. Do you think if I find a very pretty dark, dark purple or even a black, do you think a baked earth that's not going to work? I'm looking for a watercolor pencil now or an ink tense. Ooh, ink tense. Dusky purple ink tense. All right, let's try it out. I'm going to get some on there and then I'm going to tap it down. And the little shavings are going to stick to the wet paint and create kind of an awesome texture. And they're not going to stick to the yellow because the yellow is not wet. So I will let this be on here and stick here for a little while and then I'll blow off the excess. All right, that's sort of awesome. Yeah. That's sort of awesome. Okay, I better leave it alone so it can dry. Down here, this is looking very green. It's not as pleasing as up here. So I've just learned something. Hey everybody, it's time for me to wrap up for today. But if you like what you see here, I have about 40 other videos on my channel already. So you can go by and take a look and see if there's anything that makes you feel like painting. Um, anything that's in the, that all of these supplies are in my description. And so, well, not all of them, but probably all of them that you're gonna ask about are in the description. So take a look there if you are interested. If you click on any of those links, they're Amazon affiliate links. And so you give me a tiny, tiny commission um, without being extra for you, if that makes any sense. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for being here till the end. Have a great day. 